White potatoes are nasty. Sweet potatoes are pure. White potatoes will kill you. Sweet potatoes will heal you. Is that true? Watch and find out. In my last video post on this channel, I demonstrated the blood sugar rise I obtained after eating a white russet potato. I started out at 101, and an hour after eating the potato, my blood sugar had risen to 195. <laughs> Since many people suggest that a sweet potato is gentler on blood sugar and slower on the glycemic index, I decided to repeat the test, but this time with a similarly sized sweet potato. I was very conscientious in this. I spent several minutes checking out all the sweet potatoes in our local grocery store to try and find out the one that was about the same size as the white potato. After eating the sweet potato with butter and a little salt, I set my timer for 15 minutes and waited. As with the first test, my blood sugar did not rise much at the 15-minute mark. My pre-meal test read 109, and 15 minutes after finishing the sweet potato, it stood at 112. But by the 30-minute mark, those fast-acting carbs were starting to do their nasty work. My blood sugar rose to 152. At 45 minutes after eating, it was at 160. And at my normal one-hour mark, my monitor read 184. So my blood sugar did not rise quite as much as it did with the white potato, but it definitely rose too much. If I didn't watch what I eat and my blood sugar was frequently at this level, I would be in big trouble. In some of the articles I read on the internet about white potatoes versus sweet potatoes, I ran into all sorts of nonsense. One person who worked for a plant-based vegan magazine declared that all whole foods, even the sweetest ones, are healthy and, quote, safe for diabetics. In her mind, table sugar is bad and nasty, but if it comes in fruits or through starches, no problem. But these potato tests prove that there is a big problem with starches, even if the foods are whole. What she and so many other experts miss is that what makes a diabetic a diabetic is their inability to process carbs and sugars the way that normal people do. A normal person would not get a 195 blood sugar level after eating one single potato. But I did. And since I don't react and respond to carbs the way that normal people do, I cannot possibly eat the way that normal people do. If, for example, I was allergic to peanuts and they made me deathly sick, it would be stupid for me to continually stuff myself with peanuts, claiming the right to eat like everybody else. I'm not everybody else. I am me. And if peanuts make me gravely ill, I won't eat peanuts. And if baked potatoes launch my blood sugar into dangerous levels, I'll not eat potatoes. Period. Yet some people will tell diabetics that if they can just eliminate the meat and the fat from their diets and eat carbs, carbs, and more carbs, their bodies will eventually surrender and throw up the white flag, and those sky-high glucose levels will magically take a nosedive and all will be well. Another argument I heard from those defending potatoes went something like this. Potatoes vary in their carbs and sugars and in how quickly they break down in your stomach. And the way you fix them will make a difference in glucose levels as well. Plus, what food you eat with them can make a difference. So you really can't say much about them one way or another. Well, excuse me for saying this, but that's a pretty silly argument. By this reasoning, you could never say anything about any food. The answer is simple. However you like to eat your potatoes, whether baked or boiled or fried or with skins or without skins, with chicken or with steak, However you want to eat those potatoes, test yourself an hour after you finish your meal. If you get a 225, you know that, Houston, we have a problem. Next night, eat that same meal minus the potato and see what your blood sugar reads an hour later. If after that meal you get a 125, you can be pretty sure that the potato is the culprit. If you want to try a different type of potato or try fixing it a different way, go ahead. But be sure and test yourself and find out how your body is tolerating that meal. One thing is for sure. If you eat a steak, a garden salad, and a potato, you can bet the farm that any high blood sugar level you see on your monitor is not because of the steak or the garden salad. 
As I said last time, potatoes are a part of what I call the big four starches Americans love so much. Bread, pasta, rice, and potatoes. Now, these foods are not evil. It's not a sin to eat them. But for diabetics who simply cannot process carbs and sugars the way normal people do, they can be very problematic. Life is filled with adjustments that we have to make. I wear glasses. I do this because I don't see so well without them. By wearing glasses, I can still see just fine to drive and maneuver around through life. Other people, particularly young people, can see perfectly without glasses. Their eyesight is 20-20. I don't judge them for not wearing glasses, but they shouldn't judge me for wearing glasses. I do need them. The same is true with the modifications that diabetics must make to their diets. We cannot indulge in foods that may be perfectly fine for others, but not for us. We must make a few adjustments. It's really no big deal, but it can be a very big deal if we refuse to make those adjustments and insist on eating the way everybody else eats. Our blood sugar levels will go through the roof and we'll find ourselves needing to have our legs amputated or going blind or needing to take dialysis the rest of our lives. Why go through all of that when a few simple modifications, substitutions, adjustments, and deletions can get our blood sugar levels down into the normal range and give us a bright future without the complications that come from unchecked diabetes. Well, that's it for now. If you found this video helpful, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. That way YouTube will rank it higher in its search engine and more people will be able to see it. And consider subscribing and then clicking on the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you'll be notified every time we post a new video. You can find our DVD video series on our website. Go to spiritofgrace.org diabetes. God bless and see you again soon.